bioaccumulation is? No. Do you know what bioaccumulation is? No. No. No idea. No. No. Okay then. Seriously? Right. No. Accumulation is? Yeah. What is it? Suck off. <laughs> <laughs> That's true <you> again. <laughs> Bioaccumulation. Can I guess? Sure. Okay, I would guess it's the accumulation of of some sort of bi some sort of uh, accumulate. Like for instance, mercury bu building up in, in 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 fish. Yeah. And uh, do you know how it affects the Arctic environments? Um, the, the 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 top predators they end up with with uh, with. Uh, this, this build, the build, they end up with the buildup because all of the all of their prey is, is is saturated with bad things. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Why accumulation is? Uh, yes. Can you it's explain it? Like when uh, like toxins and stuff they get to an ecosystem and then as the course of the food chain they start to get a bigger concentration as you as you go up. And do you know how it, ex uh, it affects the Arctic environments? Uh, yeah, when you have like, um, like the, once it goes up to like the predators, then they start to die off because there's like, the toxin is like accumulating and gets into a higher concentration and it's more dangerous. Yeah. Okay, do you know what bioaccumulation is? Bioaccumulation. No. Hi there, my name is Elin Mature, world famous dietitianist, PhD, GED, MD. You're probably wondering what an Inuit diet consists of. Fruit, perhaps. Quite lovely fruit. Well, here's the thing. You're wrong. This is what it consists of. Fish. And lots of it. Real talk, though. The Inuit diet is also known as the ketogenic diet, which means it's a low-carbohydrate diet which helps with weight loss. So basically, the main parts of ketogenic diet consists of seal, walrus, kelp, herring, lots of other fish and game meat such as moose, caribou, and the list goes on. So you're probably wondering what's the advantages of a ketogenic diet. So the benefits of this diet is that you receive protein, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, and um, this is in uh, the meat and the animal fat. So seals and caribou, they have... Um, vitamin B12, thiamine, riboflavin, and folic acid. Inuit people eat seaweed, which has important nutrients such as sodium, calcium, uh, iron, zinc, iodine, copper, and several other nutrients. Well, basically these nutrients are key for metabolism and it helps in digesting these foods. So a good comparison between the ketogenic diet would be the low-fat diet comparison. So a low-fat diet in comparison to a ketogenic diet has been proven to help with weight loss significantly. Restricting carbohydrates, however, induces serum and urinary ketones. More specifically, it decreases the serum triglyceride levels and more high-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels increase. Let's take a moment to talk about insulin sensitivity. So basically, the insulin allows glucose to be taken from the bloodstream and put into various cells of our body. If insulin levels are moderate, then our receptors work properly. So by this, it manages the increases of glucose levels. So you're probably wondering, what is the disadvantages of the ketogenic diet? So carbohydrates are very essential for exercise, and it becomes very difficult with low levels of carbohydrates. Chronic carb and potential elevated um, cortisol is um, very, very possible with restricting such amounts of uh, carbohydrates. So low levels of carbohydrates le lead to raised insulin, which causes lowering of cortisol. So more advantages of this diet is there's more proteins and fat, which is used as energy within the mitochondria which increases the need for cortisol and which will be produced. A ketogenic diet will lead in the downregulation in thyroid hormone, T3. However, this is only caused by chronic low-carb diets, six months plus. A moderate carbohydrate diet isn't necessarily needed considering our carbohydrate levels vary from person to person, and, we, and they are often inconsistent. It is only problems like this that tend to arise from extreme levels of low-carbohydrate levels. So the impact of serotonin levels, you're probably wondering what this does to the body. So basically it helps regulate the mood, the appetite, and sleep. So these carbohydrates are needed to achieve these optimal levels. So excessive fats of animal fat and meat can result in cardiovascular problems. 
And these sort of problems tend to arise within the Inuit people because they have low amounts of carbohydrate from the diets which consists of low amounts of fruits, berries, and vegetables. And they tend to have a very high fat diet which consists of the amount of fish I was discussing earlier and the game meat such as the caribou and the moose. So basically there isn't an optimal carbohydrate level. The amount of intake, it really varies from person to person, so the effects really change drastically through, the, through a person's diet. So you're probably wondering the mercury problems that arise in the Arctic. So basically mercury is emitted to the air by power plants, cement plants, certain chemical manufacturers and other facilities. So companies have used mercury to ma manufacture a range of products including thermometers, thermostats, and automated light switches. So you think that any of people would notice by now from the large amounts of mercury they have ingested. But the thing is, mercury is odorless and it's not visible to the human eye. And lots of it is often accumulated in fish, so humans are often at risk ingesting the high amounts of mercury. Mercury interferes with the brain and the nervous system because it is a neurotoxin. And mercury is very dangerous for pregnant women and small children. More specifically, the effects of mercury on a small child consist of delaying walking, talking, shortening the attention spans, lear causing learning disabilities, and possible blindness and deafness. Whereas for adults, mercury can affect uh, fertility, blood pressure regulation, memory loss, tremors, vision loss, and numbness of the fingers and toes. Never gets old, huh? Nope. It kind of makes you want to break into song. Yep. I love the mountains. I love the clear blue skies. I love big bridges. I love when gray whites fly. I love the whole world. And all its sights and sounds. Boom de yada, boom de yada, boom de yada, boom de yada. I love the ocean. I love real dirty things. I love to go fast. I love Egyptian kings. I love the whole world. And all its craziness. Boom de yada, boom de yada, boom de yada, boom de yada. I love tornadoes. I love a wreck in it. I love my magma. I love the giant squids. I love the Climate change is causing irreversible damage to the environment, which is impacting the Inuit people's traditional way of life. It is making weather patterns more unpredictable in the Arctic. This is causing the quality of the snow to change completely. Because global temperatures are increasing, the sea ice is beginning to melt and is causing massive chunks of ice to break off on the coastal areas of the Arctic. The environment is not the only thing being affected by climate change. The Arctic ecosystems are changing because animals have had to change their migratory patterns. A main source of food for the Inuit people, the ringed seal, is becoming increasingly difficult to find because they cannot find thick enough sea ice to reproduce on. A combination of these factors is making it difficult and dangerous for the Inuit people to continue their tr traditional hunting methods. These changes are being caused by bioaccumulation of mercury in the ice. The mercury is causing depletion of the ozone layer, which is causing climate change. Mercury is being released into the environment by landfill runoff and waste, where it is absorbed into the soil and enters into the water cycle. People not recycling batteries, which have a high concentration of mercury and the incineration of coal and waste. Mercury enters the Arctic ecosystems through cracks in the ice which expose the ocean. Basically, the mercury that is in the air is being pulled down into the ocean like boiling water. Then the mercury oxidizes and it is deposited into the snow and the ice. The amount of mercury in the environment is increasing because this process is occurring more freque frequently. It is occurring more frequently because as the ocean heats, more ice melts which leaves more surface area for the mercury to enter in through. The changes in the, in the amount of mercury that is entering the environment is causing major impacts on the Arctic ecosystem, which in turn is taking a toll on the traditional Inuit way of life. Mercury levels in Arctic seals and marine mammals have largely increased throughout the last 10 years. Mercury is pumped into the atmosphere. This mercury is then mixed into the waters through large cracks in the sea ice. Ice algae is one of the main supporters of marine life. The algae absorbs the mercury and passes it down through the food chain. As the mercury moves down the food chain, it increases in amount. 
as mercury moves into the tissues and organs of the marine mammals. Although the mercury does not greatly affect marine mammals, it does cause deformities in eggs and newborns. By the time humans enter the food chain, mercury is at a very high level, since the Inuit communities are one of the largest predators in the marine food chain. They intake the most amount of mercury. I cannot get that song out of my head. Totally. I'm going again. I love the mountains. I love the sun so bright. I love crustaceans. I love the stars at night. I love the whole world. So many things to see. Boondiana, boondiana. Boondiana, I love the get fit. I love the lemur eyes. I love the future. I love when humans fly. I love the whole world. No place I'd rather be. Boondiana, boondiana, boondiana. Still dirty. Still loving it. I love to blast off. I love adrenaline. I love the big bang. I love where air is thin. I love the whole world. And being part of it. Boom the air, boom the air. children learn by helping and watching their parents and making mistakes, not by being told what to do. Since the Inuit community is considerably closer to the North Pole, they get a lot more love from Santa. Hunting is prevalent in the Inuit community, and so important that a boy only becomes a man when he starts hunting. In fact, the Inuit word for hunter is the same word as man. No animal is more important to the Inuit than the seal which is used for everything, from food, to clothing, to oil. Inuit elders say that seal meat is the best to keep you warm. Inuit hunters hunt seal by trying to fool the seals, and pretending to be seals themselves, to sneak up on them. Hunters also wait at breathing holes for seals, sometimes for hours, to kill the seal when it comes up for breath. The Inuit believe that animals choose to give themselves as food, but only if they are respected. If you do not respect the animals, you will be punished. So you're probably wondering how can we change the problems with the Arctic environment. So what we can do is we can reduce the amount of CSC chemicals. This will help reduce the ozone depletion, which is causing the ice within the Arctic to melt, as well as the introducing of new species within the environment. So reducing the amount of coal being burnt through factories will help mercury toxins from being released into the air and into water lines. The most effective way people can reduce the amount of mercury in the Arctic is recycling batteries. So mercury is used and to produce the batteries, factories release mercury toxins into the atmosphere. So since large amounts of batteries decompose in landfills, we can prevent this by recycling batteries. More specifically, with these batteries, companies and factories are able to re reuse the contents and mercury found within them.